In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Okay, y'all. Here is one of the rockets that was shot off by NASA. It's not what was in the video. So I know a lot of people are saying it's the rockets. It's the rockets. The video I posted is not of the rockets. It's something completely else. As you can see, they're two very different things. During the eclipse here in America, did any of you guys see the rockets being fired off into the moon or the sun or whatever it was? Because I didn't hear anything about it and I've not really seen too much content circulating around it. So I kind of wonder if there's more of this out there because I'm curious as to why they shot the rockets off and what it looked like exactly and where they ended up. Was it just a test phase? What was it exactly? This is a strange video captured on the day of the eclipse. People are calling it the Devil's Comet. Check this out right here. <laughs> All kinds of weird shit going on, huh? I'm talking, I'm talking about yeah, that, you bro. saw that shit now. I tried to tell you. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That fucking thing is yeah. going through the atmosphere. That might be the Devil's Comet. They got something called the Devil's Comet. Well, Look that way. <laughs> so the strange thing to me, I'm going to slow it down a little bit here. But if you look, you can see some type of flare. And there are a lot of people that are posting videos that they claim are even portals. But what do you think that this is? People say it's the devil's comet here in 2024. But it's absolutely insane. Comment below what you think. I'm sorry, they just found what under the ice? I swear to God, if this is about Antarctica again... Actually, it's not. It's worse. Literally, over the last year or so, they've been finding some pretty crazy things under the ice, as I'm sure you're aware. Hundreds of new species of weird fish, some strange golden orb, which, like, they still don't know what it is, and now this. So scientists have revived a zombie virus, yep, a 48,000-year-old virus which was buried in the ice, and they've just brought it back. Who had that idea, then? What a brilliant idea, mate. So samples of this were collected in the permafrost in Siberia, reviving 13 new pathogens, including this one which was frozen under a lake more than 48,000 years ago. Just, just wait for this. They found that the viruses remain infectious, despite being millions of years old. What? Nah. Sorry. This thing has been buried under the ice for hundreds of years and is now back and is still infectious. Honestly, I don't know what's gonna happen, like, seriously. Why well, am I only seeing this now? But anyway, they're gonna keep looking into it, so hit that follow button and I'll keep you updated. And that's just how the zombie apocalypse starts. We should definitely, probably not be reviving old viruses just to see if they work. That's kind of crazy to me and it makes me wonder, like, if something happens, if someone is not careful in the lab where they're testing this virus, it could easily spread and we have no way to cure it because it's a 40 some thousand year old virus. That's pretty crazy. What do you guys think about this? I think that this needs to stay locked away in the ice. Now that could have been the Devil's Comet, or that could have been another planet maybe, but I'm starting to see a lot of videos like this. It seems like after the eclipse, this is the type of content we're getting in the conspiracy and creepy TikTok world. Um, so it's a little dry at the moment, but I am still curious because there's so many people that have seen things in the sky since they've been looking up after the eclipse. There's been sparkling lights happening. There's been weird black objects flying through the sky. A lot of stuff's going on right now and it's pretty interesting, but it's kind of samey, you know? Do you know that sleep is the cousin of death? Did you know that? Is it like when we're sleeping, we're sort of dead? Correct. Sleep is the cousin of death and people love sleeping more than anything. And when you go to sleep in the Jewish Bible, it says that our soul leaves the body and goes to God and then comes back to the body and then you wake up. But what if I told you, if you came here with nothing, you're leaving with nothing. You don't gain here anything. You don't lose anything. You don't know where you came from. You don't know where you're going. Sleep is the thing you love to do most and it's the cousin of death. So maybe when you're going to sleep, you're waking up and when you're waking up, you're going to sleep. Have you ever thought about that? So when I go to sleep, I go into a quantum realm. From there, I grab ideas, but I go into a 
very short sleep. If I want to grab ideas, I want to grab inventions, creations, I go to the quantum realm. I'll sit on a chair. I'll hold metal keys. I'll darken the room. When I fall asleep, the keys will fall out of my hand. I'll wake up. When I wake up, I'm in a state called theta. It's the same state that you're in from the age of zero to the age of seven. It's the state of hypnosis. I've often wondered if dreaming was a form of traveling to another realm. Are, are we going to like the multiverse, a split reality, an alternate reality, some different type of dimension, or is it just all in our head? I, I find this extremely fascinating and I've wondered this plenty of times in the past. Let me know what you guys think when we are dreaming. Do you think that it's another realm? Do you think that it might be a multiverse, alternate reality? What do you think it is when we dream? Do you think that maybe we are going to a spiritual realm and that's why everything is so weird? I personally like the idea, but I kind of believe that it's just all in our head and it's just our imagination running wild while we sleep. But I hope that maybe something like this is the case. Speaking of Spider-Man 1, this is so funny because I wanted to talk about this today. You know that scene from uh, Spider-Man 1 where Peter Parker's walking through the cafeteria, trips, and uh, MJ stuff flies in the air, all that food? Yeah, yeah. That, that was not special effects. That Shut was 100% real. He had tape or glue for the tray, but all the food was 100% real. Wow! It, it was like, guess, like, how many, guess how many takes? Wasn't it like 60 takes or something? 60? 47. 47? I think it's tripled in this. I think it's up over 100. Okay, so... Oh, I gotta get it. Yeah, you gotta see it. One for 100. I'll say 114. 114? Mm. I'll go low. I'll go nine. 156 takes. <gasps> And, the, and he got it once, and that's the one that's in the movie. That's pretty crazy. I mean, that's one of the best Spider-Man movies, in my opinion. But uh, that's that's a lot of dedication and talent. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And to the people that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. And for the ones that are not subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Question for DK, where I answer questions that you want to know about me, conspiracy theories, or theories in general, leave a comment starting with Question for DK so that I can find it through YouTube search results and I can answer those questions in a future video. So we knew CERN was opening a portal during the eclipse and obviously it worked because have y'all seen all the crazy stuff that came out of it? First, there's the Arlington UFO. Very interested to hear if anyone else thought the same thing I'm thinking when they saw this, but I'm not sure that's a UFO. This does not look like a UFO to me. That looks like a demonic spirit. That is an entity. Also, what in the world was this crescent moon looking thing next to it? There is also video after video of these orbs appearing everywhere. I'm just going to show you a few of them, but there are plenty more. That's a UFO. Maybe we'll check in on Wits mother, Sharon Johnson. Maybe we'll check in on Wits mother, Sharon Johnson. It's also this strange red dot everyone saw coming from the sun. I'm thinking like my eyes are playing tricks on me. No, I can. I mean, it's like dark out. <laughs> They're trying to say that it's a prominence, which is a plasma trapped in a magnetic field loop. Others are saying they think it's the planet Nibiru. So let me know what y'all think it is, or if you had any strange experiences or saw any orbs during the eclipse. I don't know. I'm really baffled by those videos, not necessarily the ones of the spinning orbs or the straight orbs just moving in a straight line, but those black streaks going through the clouds that's something different. And that plasma or whatever they want to call it going on during the eclipse, that was pretty interesting too. And I like that some of the photos show it as a triangle, so it kind of looks like a pyramid. It's pretty neat, but 
I don't know if that's something either. That could be like a warehouse or solar panels or something that's on the moon that was reflecting the light because who knows what they have on the dark side of the moon. They could probably have warehouses and that was just the reflection of one of those warehouses being right in front of the, moon, the, uh, the sun. That's a pretty interesting theory also. Let me know what you guys think about all this. What on earth could have burned these old ancient cities up? Well, if you stick around, I have an interesting idea and theory that might just blow your mind. This one, pure speculation. It's just my opinion. It's not for entertainment purposes, but it's definitely speculation. I want to start off by showing you all of these flags that just happen to use a dragon. Why would all these actual cities and countries use a dragon in their flag? And why would Moscow have a flag with like slaughtering a dragon? Okay, that's their actual flag. This is just a little bit better depiction. It's a dragon. Why are they slaughtering a dragon in a flag? Now, to me, even just a year ago, dragons were a fairy tale. They were in the movies. They were in the books. They were in the stories. And then I found my very own dragon right in the United States with a lot of evidence. And if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's pinned to the top of my page. But for a quick, real fast recap, this is the outline of it. So it's here. It's its body. It's wing. You can see here. Its head is literally right here where you can see the teeth and things. And let me show you that real fast. All right, so here's its wing. Just look for the red. Here's its torso, its head comes around here. This whole thing here is its head, its mouth that would be open here is even called the Black Dragon Reservoir. So here's its jaw, comes stretches. You can literally see where the teeth would have been. It's petrified now, obviously. More teeth, molars. There's a dragon here, okay? It's a petrified old dragon. So once you know dragons actually existed, they really did. And this isn't just for fun. And maybe there was a time in our history that's been hidden from us where humans actually battled against dragons. And scenes depicted like this in movies aren't really as far-fetched as we thought. And if you can wrap your head around the fact that dragons actually existed, which in my opinion, they fully did, then taking that step to think that they could maybe breathe fire isn't that crazy when you watch this. This is literally just two ingredients being mixed together with a little bit of water added, and it combusts into fire. It's just glycerin and potassium. They literally mix, and they turn to fire. And there's an animal that does this. The bombardier beetle literally does this. As a self-defense, it mixes two different liquids together that, when shot out, becomes a hot, burning hot acid. Now, is it really that far-fetched to believe that maybe a much more advanced killing machine could have two liquids that when come together just happen to combust to create fire, like the glycerin and potassium? Is it that far-fetched to think that that killing machine could have been lighting cities on fire in our not-too-distant past? And maybe, like a lot of the lies in our world, it's been covered up to hide the fact that it legitimizes the Bible, because the Bible talks about dragons all the time. And they... Watch you just thinking that all of this is just random acts of putting dragons into actual cities and countries' flags. Now, I don't want to lose you by showing you this one. And again, this is just speculation, but this was a video supposedly taken in Japan not too long ago. I don't know about you, but it looks pretty real to me. I'm not saying, I'm just showing. So like I said... I'm just speculating on this one, but to me, it makes a little bit of sense. You decide. And as always, I'm just here for entertainment purposes. I'm almost 100% positive that that very end of that clip where the dragon blew fire out and it exploded, I'm pretty sure that was fake. But the concept around dragons existing in the past, really interesting. And it makes me theorize about a few things. What if dragons are who we consider to be the reptilian people today? What if they have the form of being able to mutate their body to look human and they're really dragons and we just classify them as reptiles and that's why we think that there is actually lizard people out there. Pretty interesting theory. 
And that's why they bleed that false past, that quote unquote false past into our current day. That's why they give us a little lore about dragons because it's still to hold the memory of who they used to be in the past. That would explain why a lot of extremely mega rich individuals, I'm not talking about just millionaires, I'm talking about billion plus uh, they might have actually, they might actually be dragons in disguise as human beings because as the lore is told, dragons love riches and wealth. And who likes money more than rich people and who doesn't share the money more than rich people? Because they're dragons, right? That's a pretty interesting theory. And that would make a lot of sense if dragons did exist, they still exist. There's no way we would have been able to make dragons go extinct, you know? They're way too powerful, especially if they were as large as that supposed black dragon lake or whatever that image was that he showed of it looking like a dragon. Pretty interesting theory. Let me know what you guys think about it. It's probably extremely far-fetched, but it's a fun one to think about. What the F are the sparkles in the sky after the solar eclipse? I have a couple of theories to run off of this. Maybe it's just an optical illusion and those aren't as far out into the sky as they look. They could potentially be lightning bugs. Once the eclipse happened, it got dark and they thought it was their time. So they started just floating around, flashing their butts. That kind of makes me think that's what it is. But some of those look like they were way up near the clouds. But again, that could have just been an illusion of distance. Let me know what you guys think about that theory. This is freaking me out. I found one of my old journals in the attic from when I was a kid, and there are pages and pages of entries talking about someone that I don't even know existed. Like this entry from 2009 talks about Abby. I don't know an Abby. So she took me to the playground today. She told me not to tell anyone. Since she moved into the attic, she said I should keep her a secret. I want to tell someone, but I think they wouldn't believe me. Tomorrow, Abby says she wants to take me somewhere special. I'm afraid of what it is. Abby is starting to get mean. She tells me bad things will happen if I don't go tomorrow. I want to tell dad, but I don't want bad things to happen to him. I hope things go all right. The entries go on and on about her being in the attic. So we're going to go find Abby. <laughs> Abby, girl, you in here? Wait, whoa. What the heck is that? What is this? No, nobody collects dolls in this family. I don't know if this individual is trolling or not, but I hope that they are because they could be suppressing some really traumatic memories that they might need to get fixed and go to a therapist and try to unlock those memories because there could have been some really bad things that happened to this individual. I have a fun little history story. This was during World, World War II. Right? Mm -hmm. If you remember when we talked about the Blitzkrieg, they would give the Nazi soldiers basically mm -hmm. meth. Very efficient. It was a ski patrol. They realized that they were getting surrounded by the Soviets. So like, we got to get out of here. And so they're going, going, going. And the one guy who was like one of the leaders, he hadn't slept for three days because he's been on guard. And he realized he had the entire troops thing of oh, no. meth. Oh, no. And it all dumped out into his hand. And he's just like, whatever. Boom. <gasps> No. Took all 30 of them. Whoa. And he's like, just flew past all of them. Just like going, going, going. Yeah. The guys are like, like basically, like, hey, slow down. Like yeah. you're going too fast. He ended up going the wrong way. Oh no. Totally lost the group. But he like went back to where like the Soviets were. And then all of a sudden he was like under a ton of gunfire. He ran over a landmine, <laughs> got severely injured, but he's like, I don't really feel it. <gasps> and so he kept going. He, Basically, eventually made it back to the camp three weeks later. Oh, 
alive. <laughs> he didn't sleep for three weeks, three weeks of not eating. He weighed 94 pounds. Mm-hmm. And they said that his heart rate was still 200 beats a minute. Dude. How was he alive? Oh, and it was over 300 miles that he skied. 300 miles, not sleep. He's, he's resting, but his, like, his body's still moving. Oh, world record for no sleep under regular circumstances this is experiment 11 days straight so apparently one of the explanations for dark matter is that there's sort of an anti-universe mirroring our own that runs backwards in time hold on for a second one thing that we know about the universe is that there are fundamental symmetries in nature from snowflakes to spider webs butterflies you get it we also know that in physics things like time charges and parity also rely on symmetry so what if this applied to the universe as well and to preserve its symmetry there would have to be a mirror image of the universe running backwards to our own think about it like this the big bang is at the center and you have our universe going one way and the mirror universe going the other now of course we could never access it but we could test it because a mirror universe could explain dark matter which is this invisible gravitational force that's pulling on our universe. It could explain why all of the subatomic ghost particles that we've discovered only spin in the same leftward direction. Because in the mirror universe, they would have to spin to the right, which means that as time in our universe moves forward, time in the other universe moves backwards. That's a pretty interesting concept. I guess I would like to know how does it work exactly? Like, does it work in relativity to your to your own self? Or is it in general? Like, as we know it now moving forward there was the start of the universe but to this alternate universe or anti-universe it already existed at its final moments and now is reversing back through time to its creation that's pretty crazy that means at one specific point in its life you will run across your very same timeline as soon as those seconds match to where it's an even timeline what would happen i wonder i wonder if anything crazy would happen i don't know if i necessarily believe this theory but it's a pretty fascinating and mind-boggling one to think about that's for sure all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here i'm really sorry it was super short i have a lot going on and plus the fallout series came out today and i want to watch a couple of episodes before it becomes too late as always if you enjoyed any of these clips that we watched today links are in the description down below and with that being said have a good day